but the lord does say that if the world loves you um you know be careful because like friendship with the world is enmity with god yes the lord every so often raises up a man to be so prolific that he will actually be amassing for himself millions around him but this man will also have right next to all of those millions that he has encircled around him a lot of persecution and also you can verify him against the fruit and also his doctrine is it working out what's going on what's good labantu laba are unverifiable but people in the last days it's written in god's word can't endure sound doctrine having itching ears they gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching ears want to hear so when people rock up and, uh, and they're like watch out for this guy watch out for this girl watch out for this abc and q Maybe I John some no matter last year right they got Tony Evans. How are you gonna go and be okay with the fact that Celestial was right about Tony Evans and yet he was wrong about something so important and much more of an international importance like the US election about Donald Trump? Like the chick literally put Trump in the grave. While all of us were praying for him, Ansali busy attempted assassin uh, when he was busy being attempted for death. We were praying on some God, please save him. Oh, we're scared that he might actually catch a bullet next time. S like spare him, please. While this chick is actually confirming that he's gonna die. Like, whoa, I can't. Like, I literally cannot deal. Can't deal. But you see, people latch on to all this other random rabiosh. They latch on to all this other random rabiosh at the expense of true saints. And so what, what then does that produce in true saints? Discouragement. It produces discouragement. Work. Discouragement when you're rocking up here, you share a prophecy only for last days to take it. Shares it on his, uh, on his uh, platform. And then... He mushrooms like a balloon. He out here be floating in the sky like an air balloon. He out here getting 150 new subscribers from that prophecy. While you are still sitting on zero views on the same prophecy that got him 150 subscribers in the first minute of sharing that prophecy. Like the dude has grown like mushrooms and weeds and popcorn out here popping in a pot. Sharing prophecies that are true, that saints that are unsung, unheard. Chilling all across these YouTube, Facebook, wherever streets are speaking. When you cause that level of discouragement in a person that is supposed to be using their gifts and their talents. And so therefore, as a result of causing that discouragement, they're here. When they become mum, when they tell themselves, I prophesied about a coming pandemic and literally two people watched it. And even then only for two seconds, according to my analytics. I shared a prophecy about how crazy men are gonna get but hey like ain't nobody watched that it was so bad that it was sitting on zero views never mind two views with a per with one person re listening only for the first five minutes of an hour-long prophecy because they just click away when people keep on clicking away from your content you get disillusioned you get discouraged when they keep on not listening to you when you've got only six views after your content has been up for a whole week with you sharing such a deep matters that caused you to jostle and wrestle in your bed at night it's written in god's word in the book of job that the lord terrifies us with visions in the night like he terrifies us with dreams so that we can be on the street and narrow in other words everything that's nonsensical about the earth so you don't get too comfortable do you understand because prophecy tends to be very damning very um if you don't like appropriately respond it tends to be sort of kind of gloomy ominous hey like oh my goodness that saith the lord you are going to be judged you are all evil do better turn it's it generally prophecy largely is not good news okay it is it, it, it's not the type of stuff that is pleasing to the eye prophecy in the old in the bible old and new testament largely was sorrowful it was because it was just people speaking uh, prophets of god rocking out to tell people that uh do better or else and then the or else that thing is like you will die you will be thrown into exile you will go into babylon you're going to go in there naked and chained you are going you are going you are i mean like it's hard to take in one strike but 2024 i know they be actually getting represented in the united freaking nations men who are evil proliferating a wicked one world government agenda by i'm turned ah you guys please relax they are able to prophesy over governments over governors and kings over leaders of the earth without offending them i mean look uh, can i think of a prophecy that was ever given to any king in the bible where this king was actually being glad and happy because it was like good news look i'm sure they exist right but i would go so far as to say largely maybe like only 10 percent of them maybe 20 if we are being optimistic but 80 percent of the prophecies and i only speak this because i'm again 
speculating because I can't confirm it, all right? I can't find it in my own orifices. I can't find any prophecy that I, I have not read the Bible book back to book thing cover to cover. I know shameful after all these years so i don't have knowledge of all of the stories of the scriptures so i don't know if there's ever been a positive a positive prophecy given to a king a positive a positive prophecy given to a man of leadership some kind of you know important oki that was not cold to the reception that was not the, the stuff of horis the stuff of shakes the stuff of, sh of, of 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 earthquakes like prophecies tend to be scary because it's god telling a reprobate and rebellious bunch of folk to just do a better thing he's actually telling them if you don't do a better thing literally it's not going to end well for you so the kings in question or the leaders the important men or even the hebrews the israelites or the babylonians wherever it is that this prophecy was actually being shared their reaction varied right some were just angry upset others were scared with trepidation they wore sackcloth and ashes and they repented so it was a positive reaction but it was a positive reaction however to nonetheless very scary ominous prophecy but the prophecies of 2024 god is going to give you a job god understands that you're going through so much god got this god that god wants to give you a better life god eh, okay when you are busy fornicating you are having an adulterous affair and God understands that understands because apparently the man that you're married to is not your true spouse under kingdom principles. People are being prophesied to by men and women of God, of God, that the man that you're married to is not your spouse. Like there was some silly little woman that I was listening to a short of on YouTube the other day. And I, you know, I give people a chance. Like if, you, if you're a Christian channel, I listen to you and I'll give you a chance. You know, I'll listen to the end or not end. Or okay. Sometimes it's just so taxing on the ear that you can't listen to the end. Of a video but i will certainly listen to enough of it for me to make an informed decision about whether or not you make any sense in these streets and i give people that are unsung unheard like because i'm unsung and i'm unheard so i i, I don't i don't only listen to popular or famous youtubers do you understand what i'm saying because that's unfair on people because god has poured out his spirit on the whole body of christ whether or not you have managed to amass for yourself 500,000 subscribers um god can send anybody so if you are out here being unheard on youtube i'm gonna give you a chance so this chick is one of those sort of kind of lower like um i'm sorry i'm doing something in the background my computer just restarted on its own yeah she's got one of those like smaller channels and i went and i clicked on her short um and her short only had like maybe three thousand views on it and it said the title of the short was something along the lines of stop despising prophesying yeah something about the lines of stop despising prophesying and so i clicked on it because i mean i'm dealing with people who despise my prophesying so i was like yeah girl i feel you click hey about you this chick starts speaking and in the beginning i'm like amen 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 and then she starts to say because i once upon a time went to a church and a woman the prophet a man prophesied over me and said that the man that i was married to at the time was not my husband as i was like i mean a short is no more than one minute i don't know how long that one was in totality but i didn't listen to the end maybe i was in like second 25 at this particular juncture i just clicked away what do you mean the man that you're married to is not your husband it's the man you're married to it's the man you're married to you married him whether or not it was a, a no-brainer whether or not he was a wife beater whether or not he was a cheat whether or not he was ungodly is irrelevant bottom line is you concluded a contract with him and so he's your husband whether or not you prefer that to be the case is irrelevant you made a deal with a person but then again in the last days it's written in 2 timothy 3 that people are going to be truce breakers truce breakers they're going to keep on breaking promises and then come in the name of jesus christ and say that the lord showed me that the man that i'm married to is not my husband and then go on right ahead to go and grab for yourself a second husband commit adultery and claim that this here is my kingdom spouse people are manufacturing doctrines of demons and destructive heresies and then they're rocking up teaching people what it is that their itching is want to hear you see so now when a person is out here having a whole chunk of people listening to them clicking saying prophesy preach sister preach sister and this chick is speaking about how it is that the man that she was married to was not her husband why in the world do you have three thousand people looking at you and why in the world do you have 1000 or why in the world do you have 800 likes why in the world do you have 50 likes like what's going on what's going on why do you have all of these likes why are these people just grabbing what you're saying why are they not being berean why are they not testing against the scriptures why are they not questioning you why 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 
my point exactly we're in the last days god is pouring out his spirit on all flesh people are interested in hearing prophesying but they're also unable to endure sound doctrine having itching ears they're gathering for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what the itching ears want to hear so when they do listen to prophesying they don't test it against the word of god they don't test the veracity they don't they don't they don't and they run with it gathering for themselves all these prognosticators all over the show they run with it and then when you are looking at a person that's just sitting on five thousand views on a short with a couple of likes they're in hence why they got five thousand views on that short and they're prophesying nonsense and then you look at your dry youtube channel with a tumbleweed rolling around in it where you have got prophecies that literally linger pages in other words i've got one part two parts three parts four part four part videos that are within them sharing a whole chunk of prophecy and these people who claim to want to hear the words of the lord what does he have to say that's it they're not chilling outside of me but they are chilling outside of people that are telling them what the itching ears want to hear like tomi arayomi are literally succeeding to speak to men and women at the united nations they're evil the un can't even stand israel the global elites at present are not quite what they used to be okay there is an evil out here infiltrating the annals of leaders in the world they cannot stand what is right the world is upside down do you understand and yet a person coming in the name of the lord in 2024 is not causing disarray irritation frustration upset maybe even imprisonment when they stand on a podium at the united freaking nations why did that man not upset the whole un why were they happy why jeremiah his scroll he was he couldn't even go and speak to baruch personally because he was exiled he couldn't go into the courtyards he had to send baruch he had to send baruch and jehoiakim who was the king at that place and all of his boys in the in the palace are to be tearing not tearing up his scroll they burned it they burned his scroll and in the second scroll they also did a uh, dirty deed concerning it the one that he sent but it nonetheless came to pass he was called the weeping prophet because he was always just out of being dealt a bad blow micaiah 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 it is written of him after he prophesied over ahab concerning the death of ahab in that battle that he would enter into with jehoshaphat of judah king jehoshaphat of judah micaiah out of prophesied that ahab you're gonna die whereas the prophets of baal were like mm -mm, you're gonna be good you're gonna win and ahab was like no i don't like this guy because he's a naysayer and then what did he do to the naysayer he threw the naysayer into prison and made him eat meager portions of bread and water so much so is the story of this unfortunate naysayer unfortunate that ain't nobody saying nothing like the bible says nothing about what happened to micaiah after jehoshaphat came back from battle jehoshaphat survived an arrow that was meant for ahab and when he came back we don't know if he set micaiah free it's not wrote it's not, it's not written because that's just the way that sometimes people of god are unsung they be out here getting vindicated and yet still staying in prison type establishment thing which is the sorrow of my uncomfortable soul at present i am being vindicated and yet i'm still in prison and i don't understand that whole thing and god is picking a controversy with that issue mm. let's talk about habakkuk he was lamenting lena jeremiah complaining complaining when are things going to be good when and then the lord says to him if you are lamenting when you are dealing with men on foot what in the world are you going to do when you're dealing with men on horseback essentially god tells him get a straighten up and fly right strengthen yourself do better stop feeling sorry for yourself because right now you are only making war with people out here on you're going to be dealing with people on horseback so literally get stronger than that like i have built in you nonsense in your stride because the world is gonna hate you indeed in matthew 5 it is written blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and call you all different kinds of things in the account in the name of god for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you the prophets of god will perpetually have been perpetually sorry historically just been given a bad bad blow been given a bad rap they have always just had a rough time do you understand yeah i mean like i could just go on and on and on and on they tend to also be bearers of bad bad news whether or not they're well received nathan was a bearer of bad news he was a handler of david but david received him well so hence why it's written in the new testament in one of the um, gospels that when you receive a prophet you will receive a prophet's reward when you receive a righteous person you will receive a righteous person's reward because yes there are incidents in the bible where people did receive prophets even though what the prophets were saying 
was not good news it wasn't it was hard it was like a telegram after telling you your husband has died but they were they received it with humility Nineveh received Jonah's prophecy with humility even though it was not good news I mean you're gonna burn by fire and brimstone eh, like proper because you're evil and they responded the king by him calling an edict in the land for fasting and for praying wearing sackcloth and all that jazz so that they can do a better thing and then the Lord stayed his wrath I'm trying to let you guys know that prophets, prophets tend to be bearers of really terrible news largely and there is no I mean it's written in God's Word that the disciples remember when Christ was out here walking these streets and he said to the disciples y'all don't need to fast because I'm here but when I leave then y'all can fast right yeah because you're basically in good times right now so there's no need for you to fast but when i leave then you will fast you will need to play like wait again hard knock you need to be standing in the gap and doing all things fighting spiritual wars of a devastating nature that's when sorrow will come so no need to fast eat that scripture implies that there is no necessity for god to let you know when times are good you don't when you are out just celebrating need to be fasting when good news is encircling you when good tidings are coming your way you don't need to know like because they'll just come like Christmas Easter who Jewish yo when your husband is coming is coming is coming when your children are coming are coming are coming when 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 basically good news there is no need to share it unless the individual in question has been waiting for has been waiting in attrition sorrow for so long so long that they want to throw in the towel hope deferred makes the heart sick but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life so when you are trudging through the streets of patience and you now just want to give up maybe you might get a good word because you are patiently enduring evil but you are however en route fainting the Lord could then send an angel and be like, hey, next year, relax, you're going to have a baby. Just like with Hannah. The Lord can then be like to Sarah, when she has given up, thrown in the towel, thrown away her baby growers that she knit when she was just 27. When Sarah is at that stage, then only is it necessary to give good news on some. You've given up, relax. Get yourself prepared, juice yourself up, do some squats. Because you as out, you're going to be carrying a baby in a year okay but when sarah is 26 when a person like sarah when rachel is at the pink of health and she's newly married to jacob there is no need for an angel of god to come to her and tell her tomorrow you're gonna next year you're gonna give birth to a baby i mean she's at the pink of health she's only 21 i mean duh i'm gonna have a baby next year so y'all and pursuing all of these prophecies when you're just 2019 when you're 22 telling you about how it is that next year you're getting married in two years from now you're going to have a car your career is going to take off you are working towards a degree aren't you so duh your career is going to take off you are working you you are waiting on the lord for a, a husband right and you're like only 23 so duh one might rock up next year you are you are you don't need to be told so these people are just going to churches i prayed to god for a husband and then you go to a man or a woman of god and you hope that they will tell you that in two years you're going to meet a man that's got gray eyes and he's got like red hair and he's got like freckles and he's like stout uh, and he is going to have a gap in between his teeth and that's how you're going to know he's your husband Yo, that is setting you up for failure. That is the devil basically trying to set you up with a dude that belongs to the occult that has got gray eyes, red hair, a stout, and has a gap between his teeth. That's what happened with me. When I was just 26, hey, newly saved, I got so many dreams about some lackluster dude that turned out to be a hard knock prolific occult practitioner. And I thought he was my husband. I spoke about that in one of my other videos. Why? Because I would have married him. Because of the fact that you need to understand that prophecies tend to be a particular way. Prophecies tend to, the Lord tends to fashion them to either encourage a people that are fainting because they've been waiting for too long. So that's when it comes with good news. But largely, 
It's a people that are in joy, that are jumping up and down eating peaches and apples after thinking tomorrow is guaranteed. People who, thanks to there being no strivings in their lives, are completely debauched. People who need to be told that yes, you will be marrying, being given in marriage, out here having fun. And then suddenly the flood is going to come and take you all away like in the days of Noah. It's when people are in the pink of health how, and so therefore as a result of being good, out here happily just easy freely as it flows through their tongue like a like a wonderful lyricist blaspheming god go easy nje, to just throw an expletive with the name of jesus in the same sentence yeah people like these are the ones that need to be told by some party pooper otherwise known as a prophet that that saith the lord next year this time if you don't get your act together hashtag dead Hashtag car accident. Hashtag it's giving mortuary and widow. Widowa. It's giving orphan. What you're doing, if you carry on like this, it's giving crematorium. Don't say I didn't tell you. That's profits for you. That's real profits. They will tell you igniso of an impending doom and danger because there is no need to let you know when you're going to get a husband in two years when one is inevitably going to come through. If you are truly patient in the Lord waiting on him and you're just 22 years old, why in the world under heaven are you rushing to find out that the man that you're going to meet when you're 24 is coming at 24? But if you are busy fornicating and if you are busy sabotaging and throwing uh people under the bus and when you are busy just like living it up however every sunday okay, every sunday you're in church or here rushan ten 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 with tongues that don't nobody understand because there's no interpreter you are always here on your knees every night before you sleep god you are perpetually in front of isangoma with them bepo at your etumularing at you sneezing sangomas in bepo despite the fact that we be thumbs one. You are part of the choir. You're an asha. Blah blah. What what a fish paste. People trust you. They call you a child of God. You are unroot. You you've got a, a pathway of becoming an elder one day. Isonto la kolifunuguyenza elder. Even though ungumfazi, you're a woman, but you want to go out here and teach. You want to preach. When God says, I don't allow a woman to preach or to exercise authority over a man. Yeah. Not only are you being earmarked to be a, an elder in your church as a woman, you also just so happen to be. On your spare time consulting psychics soothsayers mediums clairvoyance you are listening to necromancers you are out here perpetually standing in front of some spiritist that is not of god taking their counsel in your stride and among the the, the visions that this spirited spiritist had about you was that one day you're going to become an elder in your church and you think that that is a prophecy from god yes in guys like i'm so tired i am exhausted at this particular juncture yeah when you're like that then maybe you might get your next door neighbor just some chick or some dude that is just a praying saint from next door that will get a dream about you and they will come to you and be like eh, pinky can we talk and then she will be like the lord showed me a b c d e and that if you don't repent he is going to take your life away he's going to end you because you are wreaking havoc in the body of christ you are causing persecution in the actual church you are this you are that you are the, the other you are sowing discord you are causing Christians to be disquieted, discouraged, etc. And Abba Zalwani that trust you, you deliberately stab them in the back because you're Cain out, you're going for your brother Abel. But if you do what is right, you will be embraced. If you repent, the Lord will stay his hand of wrath from you. He is giving you this much time if the Lord will give you a timeline. But you see, Pinky does not want Njefela to be tapped on the shoulder of out of the nowhere is Kaleni Angam consulting I and herself. I, I, without herself personally going to go and consult, she does not just want to be woken up one Thursday morning by some chick from next door telling her that God showed me that you're involved in occult magic, Mara. You're always in church. Stop. Usually, people who are walking in this indiscretion and this duplicitous, um, what do you call this, like hypocrisy, they tend to seek out prophecy that's going to tell them what their itching ears want to hear they don't expect somebody to rock up unannounced and unprovoked from out of nowhere to just give them a word today but that's just the way that the lord sends his children rarely ever are they consulted rarely ever are they tapped on the shoulder of they're not told by kings please come in rarely sometimes it does happen because nebuchadnezzar did out your call daniel in so too did pharaoh out your call joseph in but sometimes it is jeremiah himself sending baruch with a scroll it is isaiah himself sending the lord spoke of um who is this guy ezekiel he said of ezekiel that ezekiel 
the way that the people of his time are going to be so obstinate and so stubborn and so rebellious, he is going to make the head of Ezekiel like his pongo sam just hard. He is going to make his hard his head hard like flint because he's going to be dealing with a stubborn people. So Ezekiel himself would have to, in and of himself, have a strong backbone. In and of himself, he would have to be stubborn. In and of himself, he would have to be unyielding. That no matter how much pressure, attrition would fall on him from that side, he would never capitulate. He would always just keep on popping up and rocking up and speaking, no matter how much they try to shut him up. So God made his head hard like brass because he knew that the people he was talking to would also be hard like that. The Lord makes his saints banjalo, brave, brazen even. And speaking to people who are celebrating, enjoying drinks, getting fat, not trying to hear that their land is about to be destroyed in four years. They don't want to hear it. But the prophet of God will be sent at the time when everybody is actually getting drunk with strong drink. On that day, the Lord will be like, say, go and tell these people. So they're party poopers. They stop tangent tambourines and drums beating and guitars and lyres being played on harps dead in their wake and they are to bring funeral dirges somber music and they cause people to wear sackcloth and ashes the reaction of communities are either like david or like nineveh sackcloth ashes repent or jehoiakim tearing up scroll punching kicking jezebel out just saying to ahab May the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow Elijah is not like one of the prophets of Baal. In other words, decrees of death on our lives, uh, contract assassins sent on us, ingabi, driven out into wildernesses, banishings of our persons. We will get thrown, we get thrown out to live isolated solitude lives in wildernesses in caves and everything being fed by ravens twice a day drinking water from the brook like Elijah and being so bereft, sorrowful because of this activity. That we will literally ask God to take our lives. We sometimes become suicidal just like Elijah. In that you will be like, what's the point of me prophesying the truth and it coming to pass? And then the reaction by these people is to send me out into the wilderness to wither away and try to kill me. So might as well, God, just give me a heart attack right now. I can't deal. I can't take this anymore. Just take me out like proper. Elijah asked God to kill him. Or not suicidal. And I don't know how many times I have personally asked the Lord to end my life because Mabani, I did a very poignant and extremely damning judging prophecy. I shared it over a five part, not Mabani, day before, over a five part series speaking about how people are going to die at midnight. And the reaction by Lama Totalan Olawa that I was rebuking has been to feel like trash five seconds into it, really. But not quite like Nineveh. However, determined to walk away from darkness, but feel grateful. At least, who hey, they prosper to take away. A decade of my life made me 40. And even when they walk away, they can trust. Like Sasa, whatever I post, I'm still going to get no views. Maybe one view, perhaps two views. The second view of which the person is only watching the first five minutes and then clicking away. They trust that even though they've been surveilling me for years as occult practitioners and even though they've been listening to my content from start to finish, they trust that even if they walk away from witchcraft, even if they decide to give their lives to God, they are holding hostage in their hearts, Ugarabo nonetheless, in the sense that I'm going to get to have my bread buttered on both sides, have my cake and eat it too. I'm going to get to keep my wife, my kids, but this woman is going to remain a spinster and this woman is going to remain without churn. This woman is just going to keep getting older and she's never going to make money and her channel is going to stay out here getting one or two views on very important prophecies nobody will ever hear that i'm a rubbish i believe her i believe her prophecies i believe what she has to say essentially right and so in and of myself mean i'm gonna step out of the way so that i don't get lamp basted also i very potentially might give my life to christ i feel like dirt and like rubbish yeah but i am low-key comforted by the fact that i won't have to watch her marry i am low-key comforted by the fact that i will never ever have the whole world look at me and wag their head on some how dare you do this like they want their bread buttered on both sides they want to have their cake and eat it too they want to give their lives over to christ and say that like us as saints i had a dream of some lackluster idiot out here trying to claim 
the sentiment of God that my children are suffering. Like the Lord was basically raining down from heaven a sentiment that my children are suffering and I'm bereft with that. And this dude was like, yeah, I'm suffering. Do you want to know why this dude was saying that he's suffering? Because ever since he left the occult, he is now ostracized. Because ever since he left the occult, he is now losing his house. Because ever since he left the occult, he is now losing cloud. Like he doesn't have what you might call this, all the resources. And he left this occult for Christ. Ever since he left the occult, his life has been not as popular as before. In the beginning, he had a whole bunch of psycho fans and everybody was out here heralding and praising him because he's important on earth and then he gives his life to christ or he turns away from the occult and then he gets ostracized but guess what i was to this guy i was his little personal assistant i was his little personal assistant i was his personal assistant and he was priding himself in the fact that i'm still by his side mina as carabo and I am not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. My YouTube channel never took off. My life never took off. Nothing of mine ever took off. Essentially, I'm unsung. Until I got to a point where I gave up. Because what is the point of constantly striving and striving and striving with nobody listening to me? Until I end up taking a job or offered me by one of these freaks from the occult that are going to repent that is not what i'm supposed to be doing a job as a girl friday a job as an assistant a job as something that's going to be his helper suitable not helper suitable i wasn't his wife or girlfriend because but essentially what i'm trying to get at is i would never accommodate any of them romantically however a man that had a wife and everything Mara that was prepared to hire me as his secretary. Yes, guys, listen, listen, listen. Like, you know, typical roles for women. Girl Friday, a help desk receptionist, a basic, like, just an assistant. That men feel like, okay, if you insist on working, sister, who want to do it for yourself, you're going to be my secretary. Langdella, man. Langdella, you are freaking disrespectful. The last job that I had, I was a program manager in corporate South Africa. And these dudes want to put me on some twirling chair out here organizing the meetings about enough for uh, what they call decent salary. Because Kim Zalwan and Kim Zalwan and as Christians, Rasotleka, in and of himself having to have to take some kind of a downgrade because he left the occult. Besa Azo Taker on his own back. The Lord's sentiment when he says that my church is suffering. Ati Uya Sogola na yourself. A business that is multi-million dollar or multi-million rand in favor of some small little thing that he's running that every so often he gets clients and then not clients and then not he's working organically so gunzi ma sometimes um sevens you again sometimes on gain sometimes um sevens you again sometimes on gain and so sometimes he can pay me sometimes he can't whereas before business was just rolling in because he was manipulating things spiritually and that, according to him, is his ten amount of freaking suffering. All that while, compre while compre comprehensively, sorry, ignoring. Thanks to what you did leading Benjit Zazirinata in the occult. I got to the age of 40 with a 10 year gap in my CV. No husband, no children. No one will listen to me. And my YouTube channel is sitting on binary code. It's hard to stay motivated to upload all of this content anyway. I should be raking it. I should be killing it. And I should be chasing around after a whole bunch of kids in the kitchen. But I'm out here being your assistant because at least get something while you try to get your YouTube channel running again. They pride themselves in the fact that even though they might have left the occult, there are 20,000 other occult practitioners that will always be coming for Christians. There are 20,000 other irresponsible souls that will come over from out of nowhere like bats out of hell insisting that my channel goes nowhere. There will be such stubborn people that will maintain their story and stick to it that they will ascertain that they will always be temba to the nth degree. There will always be other idiots about Kamuga out of nowhere that will still do to me what they did. So Bazi Jeluguti, they will vicariously bewitch me through men who are still in the occult. They will vicariously hold me hostage through men that have not quite had the awakening that they had. They will vicariously keep me a woman aging and aging so they don't ever have to watch me enjoy my life. Yeah. 
through people who are still doing darkness while in and of themselves. They've cleansed their garments, apparently they've washed their hands, they've given their lives to Jesus Christ. So everyone that's still left in the occult, because but I can trust to the taboo thing that Garabo is. Somebody else will deal with her, not me. They think thoroughly that they can have that mindset. In and of themselves, I'm sure they are claiming to be born again, children of the living God. So I have a alwane. They should essentially start to embark on a mission to get me set free. They should come forward and confess that I not only snatched them out from the flames of hell, but that they did these things. Comfort me that I've not been speaking into air. Not only that, they should call in favors wherever it is that they still have influence to try and get me restored. They should out here be working tooth and nail to ascertain that I am set free in these chains I am in. Because I get it, they claim to have come home. They claim to have loved the Lord. They claim to have been recovered to Jesus. So therefore, I'm hungry. Give me food, bugger. I'm naked. Give me clothes, bugger. I'm in prison and I'm sick. I need hospitality. Invite me in, bugger. The Bible says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. Do you understand? If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life. The Lord is not mocked by a way another will hold a person hostage with occult magic for 10 years. And then when you finally give your life to Christ, be relieved that at least somehow, only, you know, looking at stuff with a wink and a side eye, telling yourself, at least I never got to see Garabo be glorious in Christ. That's the mindset of these men. They are not in God. They have not truly surrendered. They are just scared that the judgments that I have pronounced coming in the name of the Lord are going to be effected because they have seen it happen on the left and on the right with all the others that were in the wake of destruction as at the date of me speaking them. Those that were left that don't want to have the next domino dropping falling on them. Quickly rescinded. Quickly recanted. Quickly got out. Quickly moved out my way. However, trusting that Gusanama Domino that are dropping in the Oka, they, they trust that. So God is telling me to tell you, you don't get to embrace his heaven. You are a nani sitting ja and you are safira langudra. You are out you're holding on to property that you claim to have donated to the body of Christ, hoping that nobody's gonna know. Peter is gonna be given a vision, and then Peter, who is a true prophet, is then going to cause the striking dead of Ananias and Safira. You will be moved out anyway. You will die anyway. You will be eradicated anyway. Because herein lies the deal. You are secretly hoping that all the disaster you caused is just going to remain a smoking furnace, a smoking house. Like, mm, that the next morning after the firefighters have extinguished the flames is still smoking. You are hoping to look at your victims like that. Fires that were fought, they're out now, but the person has dealt with devastating losses. They have to start from scratch. Their houses are still smoking. They've been displaced. They can't live there anymore. But you, who is the arsonist, have run away and are feeling really bad for having committed arson. But you're not prepared to come forward and say, I burnt your house. And you are also not prepared to come forward and rebuild that house that you burnt down. You are just standing back saying, I'm just glad that I finally realized that I committed arson and it was wrong. But the person whose house I burned, I cannot have them be living in a beautiful house. That's what you are. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sow and so too shall he reap. You are not saved. You can get down on your knees. You can ditch the occult as much as possible. There, is this, uh, there are these rappers from back in the day. Boy band. Uh, it was rappers. They were like... Uh, they were rappers, man. Were they rap in the entertainment industry from the United States of America, a black... Um, almost like Migos, but like from long ago. I don't even know what their name is. Okay? Yeah. One of their members died in a satanic ritual. Just like Migos, all right? I mean, one of their members died and it was speculated that the dude was human sacrifice, whatever. Who cares? This band from the US, because they got older, they got older. They walked away from all the satanic rituals that they had to do as artists in the entertainment industry. 
now that they were older and now that they were no longer rappers and now, now that they were working other jobs whatever it is that they're doing for a living now they stopped doing satanic rituals because they got to a point where they realized that this stuff is evil and that god exists and that i'm glad that i got to put you up on pete unlike our partner in crime who died who was taken by the devil i'm glad i escaped i'm glad i escaped i was listening to this the, the interview of these men these former rappers okay that are now old like they're now like older even than me perhaps like 55 now going on 60 like say do you understand yeah these guys are that old but they were big heats in the 90s big flames in the late 80s 90s etc out your rapping like no man's business okay prolific at the level of like Buster Rhymes or something but it was a boy band I, I forgot yeah whatever okay they were prolific in the days of Tupac yeah whatever they left the entertainment industry because they fizzled out they got older all right and now they were interviewing the remaining boy the, the remaining boy band members like the remaining three I think there were like four of them and they all were out here confessing that oh whoa the entertainment industry is evil yo it's wicked like the stuff that gets done in these streets like this satanic rituals the music that we do we would first do a mantra and chant to satan and 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 they would basically confess that music is evil not music music is not evil but the entertainment industry uses evil forces in order to proliferate its agenda etc these men were confessing to having been ritualists satanists at the peak of their careers as rappers but now that they're being interviewed in this 2023 2024 i think i listened to that interview last year okay it's 2024 now for the sake of i mean there's a timestamp there so yeah okay when i was listening to them then all these years down the line they were talking about how y'all the entertainment industry is not worth it god is real you would imagine it would see these men have turned a leaf and actually given their lives to jesus right and that's why they're speaking like this but as you continue to hear in their interview what was going on over there is that they saw that actually the video that i'm presently editing is speaking about that my longer form my, my content sort of where there's also animation i'm speaking about how people who join the occult get to a point where they're sick and tired of being so freaking abnormal their lives are supernatural and in a very eerie ominous capacity such that they miss life as normal they miss they get nostalgic over simplicity the simplicity of not knowing good and evil like adam and eve eating the tree out of the tree they eat out of the tree and they find out about cosmic realities that other people don't find out about and then after years of practicing and gaining undue favor from this evil atmosphere they get so worn out by how dark it is that they break away they let it go these guys were like that they discovered somewhere along the way that i i just want to be a regular dude i'm tired of every time i want a job walking into a dark room burning candles wearing some funny cloak and then doing chants cutting myself releasing some blood cutting animals fight whatever you do to get these things they just got tired of how dark this environment was the filth of their lyrics the stuff that they would say satanically that they don't even employ in their waking lives like i spoke the other day about how beyonce has these sordid lyrics and yet her own life is purer than her own lyrics they get to a point where it is that they're just like this is too evil and then they walk away you know what it's like it's like a person that is a gangster that keeps on raping girls that starts to feel filthy goes to prison for his crimes realizes that this is not a life i just want to be a normal man when he then gets set free he wants a wife he wants children and he wants a normal life even though he was once a sex offender the guy is still a rapist however one that deeply desires not to be a rapist anymore because he sees Uti, the life of rape is just too dark yeah these guys were like that because when you listen to them in the interview they were the, the expletives that had to be beeped out like the dee, 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 that was there 
every time they spoke they still were very profane they were still very profane you could tell that they were still fornicating you could tell that they were basically their lifestyles were still very uh, worldly but normal worldly their lifestyles were still worldly but normal worldly when i was before i got born again i was worldly i was lost i was going to hell but i was normal because i was not a witch i was not doing dark things i was not always grunting over me see i was not bewitching people i was not ritual i was not sacrificing animals and people i was just what you call a good girl and a law-abiding citizen largely good i imagine so really if heaven does exist i was probably going to make it in there because i do more good than bad i was still going to hell because i did not truly give my life to jesus christ but i was normal yeah these people want normalness these men that i'm talking about right now normal. they want a normal life because the abnormality of the occult is just taxing it's overwhelming and it makes them feel grubby they hate themselves they wish they hadn't done this wada wada but they don't have a true broken a truly broken and a truly contrite spirit a person that is still holding on to sins but is normal may regret certain things they did like certain like when before i came to christ there are certain guys i wish i never dated before i came to christ there are certain things i wish i never said to people because i hurt them before i came to christ i wish basically human beings we have something called a conscience it's inbuilt in us it's part and parcel of the package that is the human soul the human spirit the human psyche we have a soul we have conscience we have an ability to feel guilty for wrongdoing with or without the holy spirit this conscience if anything it's written in romans 1 that it is precisely because of it that you are without excuse when you don't embrace the, the gospel the invisible qualities of god are all over creation in such a thing as this in a desire to be normal because you realize it's extremely abnormal to use spirits to manipulate things in the physical realm and so therefore cause a supernatural horror out of the lives of your victims there is a more normal normal than the abnormality of occult practitioners and they tend to miss simplicity somewhere along the way so banale nostalgia and want a life that was like that of their teenage selves or their early 20s selves before they became occult practitioners but just like those rappers they're still profane their hearts are still are still deceitful above all things and desperately wicked they're like prisoners that go to jail for a couple of years and come back on the other side reformed. They're no longer doing crime, but they're still going to hell because they have not yet given their lives to Christ. Redemption is a st uh, redemption is metanoia. Redemption is turning. And redemption is loving the saints of the living God. It is written in God's word that by this men will know that you are my disciples. Love one another. By this men will know that you are my disciples. Love one another. By this men will know that you're my disciples keep my commandments so essentially when you get born again truly not only do you hate your old deeds not only do you hate your old ways but you also deliberately go out of your way to correct that which you did it's a repentance without confession so that's an admitting that you did dirty and repentance there is no remission of sins you've got to repent you've got to make amends you've got to correct so walking away from satanic rituals is step number one most people somewhere along the way in their occult career just want to be normal somewhere along they are sick and tired of the rituals they lawyer everything they get tired of cursing people but if you don't give your life to christ whatever whatever there was this one woman who was sharing her testimony she was a former witch she gave her life to christ and then she said in one of her in her testimonies one of her testimony because she had quite a few of them she was like after i got saved there is this one woman whose marriage prospects i i blocked and i feel really bad i wish i could go to the site where i had buried some effigy that represented her and her future prospects for marriage but it was too far i did a video about that the other day speaking about how it is that when witches come to christ there is no need for you to be 
doing more witchcraft to reverse spells and all that jazz just to set free your victims because God got them. So you don't have to go to Malawi and uproot the funny thing you buried at a grave there to represent a victim in South Africa. You don't have to do that. But just the fact that this woman had a very strong desire to basically burn that thing that was sitting wherever it was sitting that she could now no, no longer get to, that evidence is true redemption. It says that her blocking of Lingalo Lamsadi Orna is no longer something she desires. It says that she now loves that woman. She now rightly feels towards her sister. She now right the woman of which that she did that the woman of which that she did that too was also a Christian. So she now rightly had the right sentiment towards her sister. By this man will know that you're my disciples love one another. So if you don't love a saint enough to restore them, you're not a saint. You're not one of us. You are not Ah, hey guys, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. If you do not want the best interest and the improved welfare of children of the living God, you are not a child of God. If you have ill intention against any child of God, if you don't want any child, if you low key hope that a child of God does not get married, low key hope that a child of God does not get a job, low key hope that a child of God stays poor, low key hope, low ass, so you're not one of us. If you are standing back doing nothing, if you are. Uh, what is the word that I'm looking for? Uh, com uh, not, ap uh, uh, not apathetic, blase, not even that. The word, okay, the word that I am looking for is if you're negligent, man, if you're st standoffish, if you're negligent, you're not one of us. You are exactly Ananias and you are exactly Safir. And just like those guys, that those rappers, that all were giving their apparent testimonies of having left the occult, yeah. You've left the occult. You no longer do rituals, but you are still lost. You are still, these men are just like that. Lasagna. You are mad, you are insane. And you secretly hope that the smoking house that has been extinguished, the flames off, that is now completely decimated, that needs rebuilding. You are hoping that it stays smoking and you are hoping that the rebuilding, rebuilding, listen to this. You are hoping that the rebuilding is going to happen over five years. So that this woman will be running around from pillar to post, from homeless shelter to homeless shelter before she can finally move into her house. You are hoping that now I am going to keep on slowly growing two little subscribers every five months on my YouTube channel until maybe in 2029 I can finally monetize when I am finally facing freaking menopause. Alja having lived here in sorrow, squalor, destitution for presently 10 years, but I mean by 2029, it's Alja pushing 15 years, 16, 17 years. You are hoping that some other people are going to keep me in jail, even though you stopped doing the kind of stuff that can send you to prison. Well, this is what the Lord has to say. Do not be deceived, I am not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life. You don't get to come to me at my throne at the last day and say, Lord, Lord, did I not leave the occult? Did in the name of your son, did I not leave darkness? Did I not stop bewitching Karabo? Did I not leave her alone? to do what she wanted to do. And the Lord will say, depart from me, worker of iniquity, I never knew you. For Garabo was hungry and you didn't give her food. Garabo was naked and you didn't clothe her. Garabo was sick and in prison and you did not clothe her. And Garabo needed a hospitality and you didn't invite her in. You kept my daughter neglected. You kept her lonely in solitude and isolation. And you also ascertained, watching from a distance, her content, Uli One, as the only person consuming Nsebizwa because you know that she's violently shadow banned. Yeah, you kept on insisting that that kid remains a status quo because literally you kept on saying deep down inside in your ugly, ugly, dark heart, your works of which are like filthy rags. You kept on saying it would hurt me if she went and got her own life. So right now, I will just keep on watching her striving, however, with a clear conscience, knowing that I am not the one afflicting her. <laughs> you need to understand that you are still witches when you think like that. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's what is written in God's word. You are rebellious right now, so you were just as good as whatever occult practitioners you've been all along. 
you are still satanic. Even if you want to stop monitoring me, even if you want to stop policing me, even if you want to stop doing witchcraft, you are still witches because you are rebellious. You are insisting that Trin of the Living God stay starved, parched, and you are watching smoking houses and you are hoping that they only get rebuilt after four, five, ten years. So that when Karabo is finally popping her first gray and have finally has finally menopause, you then can rest easy that you never got to watch a woman you claim to have loved. Marry another guy and go out into the sunset and be good. The Lord is not mocked. Do you understand? When I first started speaking here, I spoke about Basadi, men and women, and the judgments on us respectively at Eve, at the fall, at the garden. And how it is that men had the flaw of ruling women. And their rulership therefore caused back in the day. Women that would have under normal circumstances been completely content and at ease. To be wives all their lives until they go to the grave. To become very hostile however. To become very passive aggressive however. And to become very disquieted and discontented by the lives they live. Because of the unpreparedness by their husbands to let them be held pursuitables women using their gifts and talents in indeed running a household gifts and talent in indeed being the help suitable the proverbs 31 woman it is written of her and i mean proverbs 31 was written in biblical days for crying out loud solomon okay it is written of her that she considers a field and buys it